Blair had long noticed it. After Roger finished the mouthful, she asked, It tastes all right, right? <clears throat> Roger quickly placed the cup back on Blair's side, saying pertinently, After diluted with water, it can actually taste pretty good. Blair smiled and let Rex have a taste of it as well. Rex felt that it wasn't bad as well, and the two of them shared a cup between them. Roger held it in for a while before squeezing the other lemon and also diluting it into juice, drinking it by himself. They found delicacies in the oasis, and the days seemed more like a vacation. After having good food and drink and having fun for a day, Blair recovered from her cold the next day. Early in the morning, before the heat of the sun got too hot, Blair carried Catherine and went out to look for food again. Ever since Stephen slept last night, he still hadn't woken up. They were going to be living here for a while anyway, so there was plenty of time for them to play. Therefore, Blair didn't wake him up. Roger, let's go out and take a walk around the area, Blair said. Roger got up excitedly. Blair then looked toward Rex. Rex said, I want to go to Blaze City to take a gander. Blair felt a little disappointed. Then go on, be very careful. Rex's big hand landed on top of her head, rubbing it with moderate strength. He then turned into his tiger form and left. It was best for him to go investigate the oasis. He wasn't able to feel at ease just staying there like that. Rex ran around the oasis once, didn't detect any abnormality, then went to Blaze City and tried to find out more about the oasis. The results? No one knew about it. He ran to the castle and was stopped by a few scorpion beast men at the gates. The scorpion king isn't in today. Come next time, said the scorpion beast man on guard. His attitude toward Rex still considered respectful. Rex threw a glance inside, feeling doubtful. The Scorpion King isn't in? Where did he go? The Scorpion Beast Man said, We have no idea. His majesty doesn't tell us everything. He is king, after all. Rex nodded, then took out two strips of jerky and handed them to the Scorpion Beast Men. I only want to know when the Scorpion King left. Do you know? The scorpion beast men craved for the jerky the moment they smelled it and quickly took it before saying, It's fine to tell you. Many beast men saw that his majesty had left yesterday. After you and that snake beast man left, he took off right after. He hasn't come back till now. Thank you. Rex nodded and turned to leave. How could it be such a coincidence? Could the scorpion king's traces be related to them? However, at the thought of how the Scorpion King was born a rootless beast, so no matter how beautiful Blair was, he wouldn't be moved by her, Rex felt at ease. He ran back to the oasis, following the path they took yesterday. He suddenly discovered that Blair's location wasn't there. Did they leave the oasis? No, that was impossible. It had gotten hot now, and the oasis was the most comfortable place to stay in. There was no way they'd move. This meant that Blair must have been captured. Rex felt anxious and immediately ran in Blair's direction. Not long after, another green scenery appeared before his eyes. The white tiger, who had been running frantically, slowed down a little. He felt a little stunned as he turned back and took a look. When he turned his head back to the front, the oasis still looked so clear. Could it be that he had gone in the wrong direction? Rex continued running forward, finding Blair's slender figure under the shade of the lemon forest. She was wearing a white dress and was sniffing a lemon. Her beautiful look seemed so far that it was almost translucent under the sunlight. Her cheeks flushed with a healthy pink. She wore an intoxicated expression. The young lady's pure and tranquil disposition complemented well with the fragrance of the lemons, a pleasing sight to see. Rex couldn't help but be in a daze from looking at her. At the same time, he heaved a sigh of relief. Thank the gods she wasn't captured. Rex? 
Blair noticed him and smiled as she waved to him. You're back. Come over here quickly. Roar. Rex greeted her and then turned to run off. He had to ascertain if there was a problem with the oasis. Blair was perplexed when she saw the white tiger running off. She mumbled, why did he leave again? The weather's so hot. Roger popped his head out from the lemon tree, saying nonchalantly, ignore him. He just can't stop. Let's pluck some lemons to bring back when we go home. That's of course. We need to increase the species that we have in our village, Blair said happily. Roger plucked lemons while Blair walked over and took a look at the scenery since she was bored. It was a stretch of bare sandy land in front of the lemon tree forest, except for a few thin, narrow, and long trees that had sparse leaves, casting a bit of shadow on the glistening sand. The bit of greenery on the sand gave this desolate drawing a hint of exquisite beauty. Blair was also drawn by the cabbage and couldn't help but lick her lips. She hadn't eaten plants for many days in the desert, so her body was lacking in vitamins. She instinctively felt a craving for fruits and vegetables. Roger, I'll go over there to pick some vegetables. As Blair said this, she carried Catherine and ran over. Roger peeked his head out to take a look. Seeing that it was only a short distance away, he didn't say anything. Judging from how lazy the animals here were, it was clear that there weren't large-sized carnivorous animals. There wouldn't be any danger within such a short distance. They had come out in the morning and the temperature was nice. Therefore, Blair only put on a thin dress. Her exposed arms and neck were burned by the sun. Catherine, whom Blair had shielded with her own shadow, was also burned. She buried her face in Blair's chest, making Blair feel a little regretful that she hadn't brought out the animal skin clothing. Although the cabbages were sparse, their leaves were thick. Blair went to pick them happily at the thought of how she'd be able to eat good improv salad for lunch. She didn't expect to uproot the entire thing, roots and all. The sandy ground was too loose, and even the roots were clean, full of thin, semi-translucent, noodle-like roots. It's a pity. It'd still be able to continue growing if the roots were left behind. Blair sighed in pity, working gentler. However, she continued to pick the vegetables with the roots and all. Weren't these growing too loosely? It felt as if they had just been buried. Blair started to doubt how these vegetables could grow in this place. She squatted down and took a look around. This area of the ground was completely bare, without even a single strand of weed. Yet, there were a few plump cabbages. The depth of the sand at which the roots reached had no hint of water at all. There weren't any trees on the ground to provide shade either. The vegetables started to wilt a little from the sun. Blair turned to take a look. She only walked a few steps to pick the cabbages and had unknowingly walked a little too far, leaving behind a trace of footsteps on the way. A long and slender little snake entered her vision. It slithered forward like waves, leaving traces of meandering tracks wherever it passed by. Blair wasn't afraid. She had long noticed that snake-type creatures wouldn't dare to get close to her as she had Stephen sent on her. This snake buried itself into the sand, raised the tip of its tail, and stopped moving. Its sharp tail presented a greenish-yellow color, looking like a blade of weed that had been scorched by the blazing sun. It immediately managed to deceive an ant into approaching it. A lizard that liked to feed on ants also followed it. The ant climbed up to the edge of the weed and was about to enjoy its food when the lizard suddenly pounced onto it, opened its mouth, and flicked out its tongue to stick the ant onto it. Quickly after, the snake buried in the sand suddenly rose, turning to bite the lizard, then starting to swallow it. After witnessing the series of fanes and hunting in the animal world, Blair gulped and turned to look at the cabbage that she was about to pull out. She wanted to get up, 
but to her surprise realized that her body had stiffened up. Roger then poked his head out from the lemon trees again, looking at Blair and saying, Come back quickly. I'll pick them with you later. Blair turned back and realized that, unknowingly, a layer of black fog had appeared above the sand around her. As the sunlight was too intense, this layer of black fog was so faint that it was hard to see clearly. Scorpion beastmen had two types of poison. The first was liquid venom used to deal against enemies. The second was poisonous fog used to deal with females and create hallucinations. Blair had experienced it once and immediately reacted to it. However, it was too late. She could only look at Roger with a gaze pleading for him to save her. Roger squinted his eyes and then opened them wide. His clear golden eyes reflected the scene of the female falling over helplessly in her white dress. Roar! A roar rang out, and a leopard figure darted out from amongst the lemon trees, dashing crazily over. The sandy ground in front of Blair suddenly erupted, and a huge scorpion tail darted out, curling around her body and bringing her underground together with Catherine. In just an instant, the ground became completely empty. What was left was a pile of messy sand pits with a few pieces of withered blades of grass or leaves between them. It took less than two seconds for the leopard to arrive at the sand pit and dug frantically, sending sand and dust flying everywhere. Rex ran out and checked around, realizing that this piece of the oasis was really strange. He stood on the spot and didn't move, but could still sense that his mate was moving. The quicksand on the edges of the oasis was exceptionally dense and active. A thought struck Rex and he understood. Stephen had told him that the underground palace was mobile, but he didn't really believe that. By the looks of it now, the desert was really a mysterious and dangerous place. The underground palace was probably not the only mobile part. It was likely that the same went for the oasis on the surface of the desert. It excelled in hiding. And if it wasn't for Stephen being sensitive toward water sources, or because he had a connection with his mate, it'd be impossible to find this place. Rex followed the connection with his mate and returned to the oasis once again, believing in this conclusion even more. This time around, he wasn't anxious in the least. He looked at the scorching sun in the sky and reckoned that it was about time for Blair to return. Therefore, he gathered firewood around the stone cavity and waited for Roger to come back to cook. A leopard's cry rang out from a distance. Rix took a glance in that direction and wasn't too concerned at the beginning. However, the leopard kept on crying incessantly, his voice sounding increasingly louder and his emotions increasingly clearer. Rex straightened up and looked over. Roger seemed very anxious. Stephen also crawled out from the stone cavity, crushing the pile of firewood and slithered over. Rex also quickly turned into his beast form, rushing forward at great speed. Roger had yet to meet up with them. He let out two anxious howls before running off. After running for a while, he even turned back to take a look, clearly leading the way. Only then did Rex and Stephen realize that things were amiss. Their expressions stiffened, and they quickly gave chase seriously. They could no longer feel their connection with their mate amongst the patch of sand that had been messed up from all the digging. What left them even more horrified was that this stretch of oasis had its own magnetic field, and by the time they gave chase to the center of the oasis, their connection with their mate was seriously obstructed by it. They seemed like failed compasses, with the needle spinning around crazily. They felt that all directions around them seemed to be where their mate was at. 